Please stand for the presentation of colors followed by the Star Spangled Banner. Welcome to Illini West High School and the Veterans Day program. I am Scott Schneider, IWHS principal. We are here today to honor all our veterans, past, present, and future. I want to thank all the veterans for watching today and your service and your sacrifice. We have a wonderful program for you today celebrating our veterans and all they mean to the safety of our country. Enjoy the program. Now please give a warm welcome to our guest speaker, Brigadier General Roy Webb. Roy Webb is the superintendent of Quincy Public Schools. He has been an educator for over 25 years as a teacher, coach, athletic director, principal, and superintendent. He has also received a master's degree in strategic studies from the U.S. Army War College, Carlisle, Pennsylvania in 2005. Brigadier General Roy Webb was a member of the Iowa Guard from 1980 to 2016. He has served as a combat engineer in Davenport, Iowa. He received his officer commission through Iowa Military Academy Officer Candidate School at Camp Dodge in 1986. General Webb has commanded at the detachment, company, battalion, and brigade level. He became the Assistant Adjutant General Joint Iowa National Guard in 2009 and was the Deputy Commanding General Operations, Iowa National Guard. In 2012, he was selected as a Deputy Commanding General, Army National Guard, U.S. Army Maneuver Support Center of Excellence, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Brigadier General Roy Webb deployed for Desert Storm in 1991 and Operation Enduring Freedom in 2007. In Afghanistan, he was the CJ-7 Director of Training and Education for the Afghan National Army. His military schools include Engineer Officer Basic Course, the Engineer Officer Advanced Course, Command and Staff Service School, Command and General Staff College, and the U.S. Army War College. He has been awarded the Army Distinguished Service Medal, the Legion of Merit Second Award, the Bronze Star, Materia Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, 
with Four Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Achievement Medal, Air Force Achievement Medal, Humanitarian Service Medal, the NATO Ribbon, the Afghan Campaign Ribbon, and many other awards and decorations. General Webb is married to Tricia Webb, and they have two children, son Case 26 and daughter Dawn 27, and one granddaughter, Charlotte, 20 months. Roy and Tricia reside in Quincy, Illinois. Please welcome Brigadier General Roy Webb. Hello, Chargers from Illini West and maybe even some Blue Devils from Quincy. I want to start off by just thanking you. I know you've put up with a lot. Uh, you've had to sacrifice quite a bit over the last uh, uh, six or seven months, and you've been amazing. Uh, the teachers, the principals, the leadership, I know that you've had a tough time as well too, but yet you've been there for your kids. So I just wanted to start off by thanking you. I also did want to talk about a little pink tinge in my hair. I thought I would be able to cut it out, but I haven't been able to. Um, uh, we had a few uh, staff members that were dealing with breast cancer. So I told our staff if, uh, if they would raise a certain amount of money that I would color my hair pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It did not take them long and they, uh, they were able to achieve that goal and I had my uh, hair pretty pink uh, for the month of October. Uh, I did get it cut off, but uh, it still got a little bit of twinge, but that's okay because uh, those individuals have inspired me greatly uh, the way they continue to uh, battle cancer and still be there for our kids. And uh, they come into work every day and they're working hard. So uh, they've been an inspiration for me. So that kind of explains the, the pink hair. Uh, I used to teach fourth grade and uh, one little guy wrote a biography and I still remember it to this day because there was a great life lesson. He wrote about Julius Caesar. He said, Julius Caesar lived a long time ago. He was a great man. He was a general. He made long speeches and they killed him. So I'm gonna keep that life lesson in mind today. I'm not gonna make a long speech. I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about veterans and then uh, you'll be able to go on with your day. But it's important to remember veterans on Veterans Day because uh, you know we've seen uh, a pretty divisive country and we've kind of seen what's wrong in our country over the last uh, few months uh, during this campaign period. Uh, a lot of arguing, a lot of bickering, a lot of people telling you what's wrong with the country. But I'm gonna tell you what's right with our country today. Uh, we have more wealth, we have more security, and we have more freedoms than anywhere in the world. I guarantee you that. I've been to 42 countries, I've been all over the world. The United States of America is the greatest country on earth. And I think you can thank one group of people for that our veterans. Because as you see, people have been trying to take away our freedoms and our wealth and our security ever since our country began. You know, it was the fascists during World War I and World War II. It was the communists during the Cold War and the Vietnam War and Korea. And then it's been the terrorist states that have been trying to take away our freedoms and our wealth and our security uh, during Desert Storm and uh, Iraqi freedom and enduring freedom. It has always been the veteran that stood up and said no to these groups and protected our freedoms, protected our wealth, and protected the security of our country. Our veterans have had to sacrifice greatly for our country. And uh, you know, during World War II, there were about 100 million people in our country. 18 million of them were in the armed services. 18% of our country, they knew about sacrifice. They knew about uh, rationing. They knew everybody had a, a mother, a father, uh, a brother, a sister that was overseas fighting for our country. Today, there are over 300 million people in our country. About one and a half million are in the armed services. One half of 1%. A lot fewer people know about that sacrifice. So that's what I wanna to talk to you today is about the sacrifice of our veterans. And I'm gonna give you three examples. The first one, Lieutenant Colonel Henderson. He was a good friend of mine in Afghanistan. He was actually supposed to retire, but he put, a, he put off his retirement so he could go serve his country. They needed him in Afghanistan. He was gonna be uh, the commander of the detainee facility there in Kabul. Now that was a tough place. Al Qaeda, uh, some of the worst terrorists in the country were in that detainee facility. So he had to be a tough guy, and he was. He was about 6'5", about 250 pounds of pure muscle, about my size. 
uh, at the camera, maybe lie a little bit. I'm actually 5'6", I'm a pretty tiny guy, but he was big, strong, tough guy, and he had to be. But I knew him away from the detainee facility. He was kind of a, he was one of those guys quick with a smile, a laugh. He was a jokester, always playing practical jokes. You never knew what was gonna come next. I remember one time on uh, July 4th, we were having a car pushing contest. That's what soldiers and Marines do. But uh, it was me and uh, Colonel Henderson pushing a Humvee. And uh, who we were competing against was actually the post commander, uh, General Durbin and his Sergeant Major. And uh, one, two, three, go. And we started to push. And uh, we started to push our Humvee down along the road of Camp Eggers. And the General and the Sergeant Major started to push and they just stopped. They planted their face right in the back of that Humvee. Because as you see, uh, Colonel Henderson uh, actually uh, set the parking brake on their vehicle. And he, uh, he had the whole post laughing. Now, General Durbin was not the type of person who was quick with a smile. But on this day, he was laughing too. The whole post was just having a great time. I still remember the day Colonel Henderson died. It was a roadside bomb outside of his detainee facility. All of Camp Eggers was quiet and reflective. We knew that Colonel Henderson was there for his country. We knew that he was risking and sacrificing a lot. He had put off his retirement. He had a wife, three beautiful daughters at home. But he did it for his country. He sacrificed a lot. And I know his family understands sacrifice. Lieutenant Gina and his son, Keenan Gina. I met Keenan when Keenan was 10 years old. Uh, his dad was headed off to Iraq and we were having the, the going away ceremony. And uh, Keenan was a typical 10 year old. He was running around, he had a baseball cap that his dad had given him, told him he's gonna be the man of the family now and to look out after mom while he was gone. And uh, typical 10 year old running around. The next time I saw Keenan was at his dad's funeral. It was my job to present the flag. On behalf of a faithful nation, I present this flag to you. A pretty weak offering to a 10-year-old boy who had just lost his father. Keenan, I guarantee you, understands sacrifice. He was still wearing that baseball cap that his dad had given him at the funeral. He looked up at me and he said, hey, my dad's a hero, isn't he? You're darn right, your dad's a hero. He was there for his country when his country needed him. Sergeant Bobby Briggs, another great American. He grew up pretty close to Carthage, actually right across the river, Keokuk, Iowa. He was one of those uh, young men, a little uh, piss and vinegar. Can I say that in Carthage? Uh, but uh, a good guy, but... Uh, uh, an honorary guy in a little bit of trouble from time to time, but he was a great soldier. He's one of those soldiers you would love to be in the foxhole with. And uh, uh, there was a roadside bomb. No, there was a, a, a mortar attack on his compound in uh, Iraq and hit close to Bobby. He actually lost the use of a leg. He lost an eye. He had part of his skull removed to relieve the pressure on his brain. They put the, the skull in his stomach to preserve it until he got to a forward hospital. Uh, it was a tough time for Bobby. I met up with Bobby at uh, a VA hospital in Minneapolis and I walked in and I was gonna just meet up with him and his wife to see how he was doing, see how the family was doing. And uh, I was expecting a guy pretty upset, mad at the world, but uh, it wasn't anything like that. Sergeant Briggs put me at rest immediately. He started joking around saying he was happy to see me there. He said he was gonna get uh, in his glass eye. He wanted to get the American flag on it. Uh, he was a good guy. He was laughing and joking. And uh, we, had a, we had a good discussion, but it was time for me to leave. And I was, as I was leaving, I said, hey, Sergeant Briggs, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. And I got up to leave. And he said, hey, sir, there is one thing you can do for me. And I thought, okay, He's worried about his health care, or he's worried about how he's gonna take care of his young family, or he's worried about uh, his, uh, his purple heart that he hadn't even received yet. But it wasn't any of that. He said, hey, sir, uh, the engineers are coming back in a couple weeks. 
if, uh, if you think it's possible and if the doctors let me, you think I could go to their welcome home ceremony? I know my guys would love to see me. It wasn't about himself. It wasn't about his family. It was about his team. And I will tell you it was about his country. Sergeant Briggs knew all about service and sacrifice. He knew about what was right in America and protecting that. Now, Sergeant Briggs died a few years after that from some complications from his injuries in Iraq, but he was a great man and he knew about sacrifice. He lived most of his last years unable to walk well, unable to see real well, unable to think, but, uh, but he still loved his country and he still loved his family. And I guarantee you, his wife and his children understand sacrifice. So I'm often asked all this sacrifice from veterans. I mean, uh, we've seen the funerals, we've seen the injuries, we see the, the grieving widows and widowers. Is all that sacrifice worth it? Despite all of our divisiveness and despite the problems you see in our country, we still live in the world's greatest country. We still have more wealth, we still have more freedom, and we still have more security than anywhere else in the world. So is it worth it? Absolutely it's worth it. It's tough to lose great men and women like Colonel Henderson and Lieutenant Genau and Sergeant Bobby Briggs. Those are tough things to do. But without a doubt, it's worth it. But the one thing that we need to do is continue to honor these men and women, our veterans, and what they do for our country. So take November 11th as a time to thank our veterans and let them know that we appreciate all they do. I appreciate uh, Illini West. I appreciate the Chargers letting me uh, talk to you a few more minutes. I, I hope you have a great rest of the school year. Hang tough, be positive. You live in a great country. Thank a vet. Thanks. Thank you, General Webb, for your inspirational words. At this time, I would like to recognize seniors who have enlisted or intend to enlist in the military after graduation. Alexis Brewer, the daughter of Samantha Brousseau and Richard Brewer, has enlisted in the United States Army. Adam Hurlbert, the son of Greg and Mary Hurlbert, has enlisted in the United States Air Force. Randall Johnston, the son of Jay and Tiffany Cossey, will enlist in the United States Marine Corps. Congratulations to these seniors. Now, Lina West High School students will read their essay, What Veterans Day Means to Me. Hi, my name is Gavin Bergman, and today I'm going to be reading my What a Veteran Means to Me speech. The question for this paper is, what does a veteran mean to me? By definition, a veteran is a person who has served in the military. For me, that definition is just one part of these amazing people. This group of selfless men and women aren't just a part of the military. They are brothers, sisters, moms, dads, grandpas, and grandmas. These people are part of families. They are more than just a person who has served in the military. They are our heroes. These people make so many sacrifices to protect our country. Some miss the births of their children. Some have missed their parents passing away. The list goes on. These men and women have had to make some serious sacrifices to protect the United States. They do not get enough recognition from the public and definitely do not get any from the media. It's sad to see what see veterans get used to some political game played by our politician and sown by the news media. Some politicians in particular don't care about our veterans, even though they, they may say they do. Our troops deserve to be respected and not cursed at by political candidates for not clapping on the queue. Sadly, this disrespect goes unnoticed as the news media doesn't report on stories like the previous one. With no media coverage, the disrespect still happens in the real world. I wish I could say that my generation understands what our veterans have gone through and still go through day to day, but I can't. The reality is mine and the generation before mine have failed, been failed by our parents, schools, politicians, media, whatever it is. Something has failed to teach us the meaning of the word respect. Our generation will fight for causes that achieve nothing but destruction and division of our country, what our veterans have fought to protect for so many years. 
our veterans have never really been treated properly in terms of respect and in terms of mental health. Some of the things our veterans have seen and heard are horrifying. These men and women have to go from the battlefields to backyard barbecues, and that is not easy on the one's mind. The stories that have been told from just the Vietnam War alone would make most people cry, and those are just the ones that have been told. The mental strain that these different times of war have put on our veterans is insane. Most students aren't really aware of how much our veterans have actually gone through. After doing just a little bit of research, anyone can see how much respect and honor they deserve. I hope that my generation can still change and be more respectful for the people that risk their lives for us. I know that lots of my classmates do care and do try to be respectful as possible to our veterans, Hopefully we can try to bring that respect back to our veterans through communicating with people our age. In conclusion, what does a veteran mean to me? A veteran means someone who has taken it upon themselves to willingly sacrifice their time, health, mental stability, and financial stability for the protection of the people of the United States of America. That is what a veteran means to me. I would like to thank all the veterans that take their time out of their day to read or listen to my essay. Also, I would like to thank you for your time served in the military. What does a veteran mean to me? A veteran is someone who has shown bravery beyond belief. They are the ones that have put their own lives on the line to protect the people that they do not even know and to protect this nation's freedom. They joined the military, not thinking about what could happen to them, but they joined knowing that they could make a difference in this world. There are some veterans that are not as lucky as some others. They don't always make it back home and all their family, families have to remember them by is a flag. Veterans have fought with valor, they have fought with bravery, and they have fought with loyalty. They would do anything to protect anyone and, every and everyone, even if that means they die because they know what is right and what is wrong. And they will try and get all of the wrong things that are bad for the world out. Just like the war in the Middle East, the military was moved there to protect the safety of this nation, but it later, later turned into protecting the people of those countries because of all the bad things that were over there. I just think that is a disgrace on how veterans are being treated these days by people. Veterans have fought for that same very flag that people are burning and saying that it's just a piece of fabric. fabric because it's not just a piece of fabric. To the family members who have a flag for each of their sons and daughters that have died for this country that they loved dear to their hearts. But even through it all, the military and the veterans keep fighting for those people. I couldn't thank the veterans enough for what they have done for this country, because without them, we would not still be living in this free nation. They have fought and died for this country, and without them, I could not be writing about my gratitude for these great men and women. Those very men and women are the backbone of this country. Just like in the human body, without a backbone, we would just tumble over and fall. And without the veterans, this country would do the exact same thing. So I asked myself again, what does a veteran mean to me? After reflecting on these words, I realized I wouldn't even be able to be who I am today if it wasn't for those brave men and women. They mean the world to me, and I would do anything that they would ask of me if I was able to do so. What is a veteran? Some people might think of veterans as people who serve currently in the military or they used to serve in the military before. That is not just how I think about them. They are the brave men and women who fight for our freedom. They fight for it so we could live in a free place where we have the right to pursue anything that we could achieve. They fight for our country not just because they must, it is because they love this country and they would die for it so people would not have to see this beautiful land crumble. A veteran is brave. They would not be afraid of standing up to the enemy and they would defeat them until there is peace. Veterans never give up. When they fight or defend themselves, they would push every ounce in their body within them to finish that fight. Veterans are the true heroes of this country, and I'm so grateful that they're here in people's lives to serve, protect, and defend this wonderful country. Sometimes, veterans must make sacrifices in life. 
the hardest one is to leave their families and move to a location far away from them. Veterans who leave home to fight for our country truly love this country. They love it because they know that if they do this important job, there might be a chance he or she might not come back home. I applaud them for that sacrifice because I could never imagine myself leaving my family knowing that there would be a chance of me not coming back home. Veterans are the strongest people that I know that I know that would be able to handle each sacrifice that comes their way even though those sacrifices that they may carry a burden on their shoulders. They also love this country because these brave men and women are not serving our country to receive medals, trophies, or any sort of recognition for their service. They are there to protect this magnificent country and the people who live in it. That is what selflessness means, to serve not just for the recognition, but for the protection and well-being for the people of the United States. Even though these brave men and women are considered the modern-day superheroes, they still consider themselves as normal, regular people just trying to get through each day. You might see them walking their dog in the park, shopping for food at a local grocery store, or eating at a restaurant with friends. They do not look for any publicity. They just say that they were doing their job. Um, they say things. Things such as the people who did not come back home from the war are the real heroes. They never realize that their military service is just as important as the other brave men and women who died for us. That is why veterans are the most modest, humble, and selfless human beings I have ever met. I was taught by my family that everyone should be treated with respect, especially those who currently serve or used to serve in the military because I have family who have served. My dad and a couple of my uncles served in the army, one of my uncles having served in the Vietnam War. My other uncle served in the Air Force and Marine Corps, and my cousins also served in the Marine Corps and Navy as well. Since I have relatives who served in all of these military branches, I celebrate every Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Those important days are the days that people of this country should celebrate. I feel like now with all of the anarchy and disrespect our country has been going through, some people forgot the importance of these veterans and the military. People should celebrate these days as a reminder that these veterans gave up their lives for us and sacrificed for us so we would not have to be afraid and live in a beautiful, peaceful homeland where we could pursue our freedoms and achieve our goals. That is what a veteran is. They are fearless, courageous, and selfless, not just only to their military service, but in their community. We should respect veterans because they have done so much for us. If it were not for their fighting spirit in the wars that we had, we would not have the freedoms that we are able to pursue today. We should also respect veterans because they protect each and any one of us. They go out of their way to help a person in need, whether on the battlefield or helping a person reach for food on the tallest shelf in a grocery aisle. I believe that veterans are the modern day superheroes um, and when we should honor them every day and thank them for their service. Hi, my name is Marley Lord. What is a veteran? To me, a veteran is a hero, a friend, and someone you can always count on. A veteran is someone who would lay down their life to protect people they do not even know. That is true honor. Veterans gave up part of their own lives to protect the lives of others and their country. They sacrificed time spent with their spouses and children. Veterans deserve all the respect and gratitude because they were brave enough to serve for our country and protect our freedoms. Veterans honor everyone with their presence. So today we honor our veterans and those who are currently serving. When I think of a hero, I think of a veteran. There is no greater hero than a veteran. It takes courage to put your own life on the line for other people. It takes courage to leave home and family, and our veterans had that courage. They went through so much to protect their country. Their bravery is a symbol of why our country is so great. They fought for their country and risked their lives to protect the people. They didn't have to do that, but they care so much about our country and our freedoms, and that is a hero. 
We have our freedoms because they fought for it. And not everyone is willing to do that. So today and every day, we honor our veterans. A veteran is a friend. A friend is someone you can always count on and someone who would do anything for you. Friends are kind, caring, and always have an amazing heart. A friend is there for you no matter what. That is exactly what a veteran is. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. A veteran was willing to lay down their life for ours. They were willing to sacrifice everything for us, and they don't even know most of us. So a veteran is a friend to everyone, even if you do not know them. A veteran is someone you can always talk to. A veteran is a person who is brave enough to go out and fight for our country. Without them, we would not have our freedom. Many take that freedom for granted, but we all should tr truly appreciate it and remember where it came from. There are too many people who don't respect our veterans. When I see a veteran, I am reminded of my rights. I am reminded of everything they did to protect us, and for that, I am truly grateful. Veterans gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country, and we owe them so much for that. There is no way to describe how much we owe them. There are no words or actions great enough to prove how thankful we are for our veterans. How do you respect a veteran? Simply just say thank you for your service. Saying that will make their entire day. Go up to a veteran and start a conversation with them and ask them questions. Show up to the Veterans Day event in your town. Show them respect and always be kind to them. Our veterans deserve a world of kindness for everything they have done for us. A veteran is someone who deserves respect. Absolutely no one should ever disrespect them. There are too many people in this world who forget what they have done. Without them, we would not be the country we are today. So when you say a veteran, always say thank you. You have no idea how much saying thank you means to a veteran. It makes them feel truly appreciated, and they should always feel that way because they have truly earned it. To all the veterans, we thank you for your service, bravery, and courage. Thank you for fighting for our freedom. Thank you for your dedication to our great nation. You have set a great example to everyone in this country and so many are influenced by what you have done for us. Thank you for being our friends and thank you for always being there for us. Thank you to the families of our veterans who have also sacrificed so much. We are forever grateful and you are always in our hearts and on our minds. We are so thankful for all the veterans and their families. You will never be forgotten. I speak for everyone when I say you are truly appreciated. Thank you. What a veteran means to me. Sacrifice, courage, and selflessness are all words that go hand in hand with what we call a veteran. Sure, the Oxford Dictionary defines a veteran as a person who has served in the military. But is this really how people see it? A word that means so much hidden behind a simple definition? Every day people wake up, eat breakfast, and go to work. Every day someone takes their daily walk down the streets of New York City just to go to their job. Every day a mom gets up and gets her kids ready for school. Why is this possible? How is this possible? How many times does a normal human go through their daily routine and have any realization of how all of this is possible? To be free. Years upon years of selfless humans we call veterans who sacrifice their lives for the life of every person in our country. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter if, if you're a Democrat or a Republican. You are an American. For that reason, every veteran puts their life in front of death so that moms can take their kids to school and so that one person can get the job that they have dreamed of having since they were a kid, to have freedom. So what exactly is a veteran? Someone who believes that another equally made human life is more important than themselves. Someone who sees themselves as a normal human while everyone around them sees them as a hero. They don't ask for much and are extremely modest. They stay away from publicity and will tell you every day I'm just doing my job. They live in discipline, so we don't have to. They go to war and are deployed overseas to protect our way of life. Many, millions of men and women have died for our country just to take a step towards bigger freedom. Day by day, they improve our lives one small step at a time. Bravery, or how General Omar Bradley put it, the capacity to perform properly even when scared to death. This is one of m many words that come together to describe a veteran. Being able to sacrifice your own blood, sweat, and tears for a bigger cause that you may not even come back to see. Barack Obama once said, Our nation holds a debt to its fallen heroes that we can never fully repay. There is no greater sacrifice to this country than giving your life. Millions of men and women who never came home knew that by giving their life to this country, it would become a better place. Think about it. How do you repay someone who has served or died fighting for this country? 
you can't. And that's what's crazy. There is no amount of money, gratitude, or respect we can give to veterans that can repay what they have done for us. But even though we can't repay them, that doesn't mean we don't need to try our best to show them we are trying. Especially in today's world, there's so many BLM protests and riots and politics are all getting out of hand. And let's not forget about the coronavirus. Our country is in need of some help. Veterans have fought and died for this country, and to even bring up the talk about defunding police is almost disrespectful. So in all respect, I ask, every time there's a chance to talk and thank a veteran for everything they have done, take that chance. There are no words I can describe how much they deserve it. Thank you. Gavin Bergman, Catherine Charles, Cole Jackson, Christian Leinberger, and Marley Lord. Before we finish the program, just a few thank yous. Thank you to Greg Honer and his students for all of their help and the papers What a Veteran Means to Me. Thank you to Jessica and Scott Kneisel for their help with TAPS. Thank you to Chris Greenhalge for filming and editing today's program. Thank you to Brigadier General Roy Webb for his time and effort on a great message. Thank you to Daryl Kraft for his presentation and retiring of colors. And thank you to the custodial staff Lisa Duffy, Roger Duffy, Bob McVeigh, Gloria Simmons, Brandy Simmons, and Tyler Shilson for all their help in setup and cleanup. I would like to conclude today's program with excerpts from General Dwight Eisenhower's message to soldiers just prior to the D-Day invasion of France in 1944. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. General Dwight David Eisenhower. Thank you once again to all of our veterans for your sacrifice and for your service. Thank you to everyone for watching today to honor our veterans. Now a moment of silence, followed by the playing of taps and the retiring of colors. Please stand if able. Thank you.